Hey folks, it's Fritgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Alps Panorama at the Northern Sea here in Farming Simulator 19. I'm wondering if I should be cleaning, like aiming to clean cows and that, twice per day or once per day. And very often when I'm playing, I will we aim to do it twice per day, once first thing in the morning and once last thing at night. It does seem to work quite nicely with it. Have a look at them. I mean, cleanliness is 85%. We, we're pretty good as far as cleanliness is concerned. And yes, I definitely do want to get uh, more water. An another thing of water, minimum, to see us through the night by the look of it. Possibly. A I'm, I'm not going to get another one, though. I think we'll, ju we'll just stick with the three tankers. And if it does cause us a slight problem, at least then we'll be able to see how much of a problem a lack of water does cause. Because it's not going to kill... It doesn't kill the animals immediately. You do have to have them with no water for, there for a while. I think if they've got no water when it goes past midnight, that's when you get into trouble. So, so long as the water will see them until midnight, it shouldn't have a detrimental effect on the animals. Although their percentage health thing, that might end up being affected by no water. Because we've got right there, you've got health 82% on these. And health is 66% on the cows. Now, we've got 17,000 litres of water. If the water goes to zero, I think the health does slowly start to drop. But I don't know if it does it immediately or if it only does it at midnight when it realises that there's no water there. Because the midnight transition for seasons is quite an important thing. It's like There's a lot of different things happen at midnight. If you're going to get a growth stage, it happens at midnight. If you're going to get... Um, grass disappearing or um like rotting away or if you're going to have straw or hay ro disappearing and rotting away because they've been rained on that all happens at midnight so if it gets rained on and then you stick it under cover as far as i know it's okay it's only if it's still outside although i don't I don't quote me on this i don't know about that bit if it gets rained on and then you put it under cover I don't know if you still lose the hay or not. It might be that if it gets rained on and then you've got it under cover at midnight, it's okay. If it gets rained on and then the game does its check at midnight to see if it's outside and then it looks to see if it's been rained on, then it will remove part of the bale. And it, I, I don't think it even rots the whole bale. So I don't know about that bit. You've got like this little crossover point on there. I, I, I genuinely have no idea on that one. Right, we'll stop you. Come out here. Uh, you're fine. Uh, we're going to go down to here. 24,000 litres. I'm hoping 24,000 is enough to see it through the night. We're going to find out because I'm going to go over and I'm going to skip the night now. I'm going to fast forward here. I'm going to stand in our doorway like that. And I'm going to go forward one more little bit like that until 9... Uh, not 19. 17... At uh, 7 o'clock. 1900 is 7 o'clock. So I'm going to go like that. And I'm. Gonna, you are not tired. Don't tell me what I am and I am not. Don't do it. I know if I'm tired. If I tell you I'm tired at 7 o'clock when it's broad daylight outside, then I'm tired. I could have been working very hard, you know. I have. I've been cleaning machinery. I've been bringing stuff back. We've bought cows. I've done all sorts of stuff. And you... Well, actually, we bought the cows yesterday, but I'm still tired from that. You can't be telling me what I can and can't feel, all right? Okay, it's, it's, um, I, mean, I am allowed to be tired if I want to. You cannot be doing this to me. I don't know who I'm talking to exactly. Maybe it's the... It's, it's Alexis. That's who it is. It's Alexis in the house in here. Uh, whoever the other... Because you've got Alexis. You've got... The, the, there's other ones now, isn't there? You've got loads of them. There's, there's all sorts of different ones. They're, basically, it's just robots that speak to you in your sleep. Or you, you, you go into your house and you speak to them. Okay, I've got to come all the way out over here to be able to reset that. There we go. That's more like it. All right, I can have 13 I can have thirteen hours of sleep. Ooh, maybe I shouldn't have had 13 hours. That's a long time for the cows to go without water. I should have gone until like 6 a.m. The game is synchronizing. I've just... I've used an extra three hours of time that I shouldn't have then. Chickens are all right. They're fine. Oh, dear. Oh dear, those three hours, they could have cost us quite a bit. These The, the animals are all down to 46%. That, that was a mistake that cost us, that was. Oh, cool. Look, it's got a massive great big water tank in the back. That is very awesome. 
Disappointingly, though, it's still not installed. <laughs> still not. How long does it take to install that? It doesn't actually say, does it? It doesn't say how long it takes. But I didn't realize that that one put a massive great big water tank. There's no wonder it's taken so long. Right, we're going to have to be doing some more ferrying of water. First up, let's go over to the chickens and we'll deal with those. We've got a little bit of food that is spilled on the floor that we're going to have to clean up. We'll just go over here and we will open that one up like that. There. So that has now filled that one all the way up. That is two days. Now, they said you do it two days and then you've got to feed the animals every day. So, I mean, if I left these a little bit longer before feeding them and then we do the water again... We'll probably be all right for um, not feeding them tomorrow. We can go on. Oh, and the other thing that I wanted to find out was we had a load of game synchronization. So I'm assuming that we've had a load of growth. We have not had any growth whatsoever. No growth changes at all in here. I've got a few odd bits of... Oh, germination failed. There's a couple of little patches in here where I've got germination failed. On there. Soil composition. Got some weeds. And then we have got that all the way over it. But there are some patches in that big field up there. Where germination has failed. I'm going to run up there a minute. And see if I can find one of these. And take a look at it. Oh wow. Ah. So we've got some quite big patches here. Why did we get germination failed? The temperature was fine. When, when we planted, the temperature was absolutely fine. But look, we've got this huge, great big patch right here. Germination has failed. I go there. There's that bit there. There's another one up there. And there's a couple of other little bits down here. I'm very tempted to just bring the stuff back up. Because, I mean, it is only, like, early... It's still very early stages. The weeds... I... Honestly, I don't care about the weeds. I'm... I'm kind of thinking it will leave the weeds because the, again they're only in small patches they don't seem to have done I don't, I don't know how much of an impact it's going to have on the field overall because you look weeds right here and I look in that patch right there and then I've got some weeds there and we've also got this one press and hold like that wait what's it doing oh shows these as menu activate hand tool What's it doing? It's not doing anything. No. It's just giving me a red... What? What's... It's supposed to do something. Oh, now it's doing something. Right. We've got 17% something, 13% something. I don't know what all the symbols are. It tells us our elevation. It tells us the crop. This is something to do with moisture content. And that's something to do with the moisture content as well. So I, I, I don't really know what these things are. It, it, it doesn't entirely make sense to me. And then I look at this bit. Oh, now it's working. Right. It's, it's, just, it's not giving me any details about weeds. And then I go and look at this bit here. 0%. saying barley... 13%, oh, 0% established, grown, oh, grown, 17% growth on that, 13% moisture, 13% something, I don't know what that is, I don't know what the symbols are, so I don't really know how to translate it, I'm not really sure what I'm looking at with that, at all, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, the big question is, do we go and re... It's only small bits, isn't it? I, honestly, there's there's a couple of little spots where germination failed, but honest, I, I don't think it's very much. So I'm not going to worry about that. Seven degrees is the soil temperature, so I'm not planting... I'm not going to do any planting today. That's not something that we're doing. I need to do... Wait, it was water. Water was the next thing that we wanted to do. We've, we've gone and looked at some things. Where Where was my water tanker? John Deere, no, 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 no. New Holland, there we go. Right. Let's get you and we'll go and get some water. These cows are getting thirsty. We can't leave them too much longer. They've already taken a massive health hit, which is mainly because I slept in late this morning. 
sleeping in, <laughs> apparently sleeping in is something that is frowned upon. And yes, I, I admittedly there's not a huge number of farmers that regularly sleep in very late, but um, honestly, I didn't think it would matter all that much. But apparently, sleeping in is very, very much frowned upon. So let's back in here. I'm spending a lot of time doing this, and this again, this is why I'm starting to wonder about whether I should go and just lease a tanker or the truck and put a whole load of water in for the cows. Because I don't actually know how long it takes to install the water supply for the cows. Like, if that's going to take three days or something obscene like that, then we got a, we still, we got a lot of tanker fulls of water that we're going to have to dip out of the pond and take round to the cows. And this is something that I'm not sure that I really want to do. It's definitely something I'm, I'm curious of whether I actually want to be doing it. Um, let's not drive into the wall. I'll bring you over there and I'll get you unloading. So I've at least got some water in for there. Then I'm going to go over to this one. I'm going to clean up the bit in front of the chickens, and I'm going to clean up the bit in front of the cows. I'm not going to feed the chickens yet. I'm going to leave them until a little bit later in the day, so that then I don't have to worry about feeding them at all tomorrow. I can just wait until the following day before I feed them. Um, so we pick up the 16 litres of wheat that is left on the ground in front of them, like that. And tip that in. That's all I need to do. This chicken's dealt with. Let me go over this side and we have a look in here. So they've got 339 litres, which is probably going to last them for another four hours, I would say. Something like that. I mean, so long as in two days' time I'm feeding these chickens before 9am, we'll be all right with that. It's 9.16 that we've got. So, so long as we feed them before then and we've sort of boosted them up, we'll probably be all right. But I'm, I'm kind of thinking that you're know, just just leaving it a little bit wouldn't hurt. So let's let's do the cows here a second. Like that, 556 liters of silage in there. That's going to help them out. They're going to like that. Get that lot in there. There. So now we've got some very happy cows. Go down. Nope. There, like that. So I've now got 555 litres of silage, 5,000 litres of grass, 7,000 litres of water. Cleanliness is now cleaned. And we need to get a little bit more food, which means more grass. There's not going to be a great deal left up in the field up the top. We haven't had another growth stage, so I'm going to need to take the Zerion back out again and do a bit with that one. Once around the field again, like we did. Whoa, 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 whoa. I do in here press the wrong pedal again I'm I'm having an off day it's got to be said I, I keep pressing the wrong pedal I'm not quite sure why there's no I, I can't think I cannot fathom any particular reason why but yes I am having an off day I will freely admit so we'll take this one and we will go back up to the meadow up at the top and we will quickly do a little bit of mowing I want to go around this way one thing I don't like about the layout of the farm here is this horse pen right in front of us. It's in the wrong place. It's definitely in the wrong spot. We should be able to just drive straight out the front there. Um, I think that one should have been just positioned slightly differently. Now I'm going to unfold. That's turned into hay. Now I got a I, I've, I've heard about this. If you just leave it, it does turn into hay. And we've not had any rain, so it will become hay. I've got to be honest, this is something that I don't like about this, about seasons, is the fact that grass turns into hay without you having to do anything. Right? You don't need to turn it, and it will turn into hay as it is on the ground. In Europe, that doesn't happen. Right? It just doesn't happen. It's not dry. They're, well, most of Europe. Southern Europe, maybe. Southern Europe, that might happen. But certainly, Northern Europe and UK, that doesn't happen. If you want to make hay, you've got to turn it. And you're probably going to have to turn it several times because of the simple fact that um, we don't have high enough regular temperatures and we don't have enough... Um, like the, the, the sunshine is, is literally it's, it's the temperature, the sunshine and everything I have known from being cut 
uh, being turned. I have known it to be cut in the morning of one day and baled in the evening of the following day, but that is a very, very unusual thing. That is very unusual. Normally, you would cut one day, you would turn it the same day, you would turn it the following day, possibly twice, you would turn it the morning of the next day, and then you'd probably row it up and you would bale it. You might, might end up doing that, um, uh, you, you might end up sort of taking a little bit longer than that even. Um, mow, turn for two days and then bail up. But generally speaking, you would mow one day, you'd have a day where it'd be on the ground and you would be turning it. And then you would go back and the final day you would um, turn it and row it up and bail it. Um, it's, kind of, it's kind of normal is you bail it like... You mow it the first day, the second day is just turning, and then the third day you bail it up. That That's fairly normal practice. So you, you do have to turn it quite a number of times in order for it to... Because it fluffs it up and it allows the wind to get through and it allows the... Um, so it blasts the moisture off. It does depend on the sunshine a little bit. If it's quite hot, then yeah, you, you can sort of inch back towards the second day. Um, but it's, it is quite unusual. It is definitely quite an unusual thing to be doing that. Now, if I go like that, it'll lift the front mower, and then I can go back like that here. I am curious if we're going to be able to pick that hay up along with the grass in the forage wagon, or if it's going to need two separate loads. We'll come up here and we'll start picking up the hay first. And then we'll see if we can pick the grass up alongside it, or if it will just pick it up as two separate crops. Because uh, one version of the game, definitely, it didn't let you do it. It didn't let you pick up loose hay, for whatever reason. You, you, if you tried picking up loose hay, it would just class it as grass, and, that, and then it was sort of done with, and you didn't have any other option. Um, let me just pick that one up there, and I'm just going to do a little bit here to finish this off just like that we don't want any more than this we've got plenty on the ground so I don't want to be cutting any more than we've absolutely got to so I'll put that I'll pick that one up like that now I can pick them both up like this and then we can just start folding them up so I fold that one up and I fold that one up and we can head back down to the yard and then we can rush back up here with our forage wagon and we'll see if it's turns it straight into grass in the forage wagon or if it indeed identifies it separately so yeah this one alps northern panorama does suggest it's in the northern part of europe and also the fact that it's alps Al the fact that it's an alpine situation um it drying out and turning into hay without needing to have a hay turner put onto it i don't like that that doesn't uh that doesn't seem particularly realistic. Um, for somewhere that is a lot hotter, then yes, that it is the case. That that does happen. And I know that some of you have told me, uh, quite a number of you have said, look, we just mow it and then we, we'll um, bail it up the next day. We don't do anything else to it. It's literally mow, in a, uh, leave it in a swath, and then bail it up. Well, that's fantastic. You know, that, 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 would save, that would save a huge amount of work. But we, we, we don't have such luxuries here in the UK. And most of Northern Europe... We don't have such luxuries. We, we've got to we got to work hard with those hay turners. Those hay turners will cover the fields a number of times before we're all finished. And how much more water do I need? Oh, I've only put one load in so far. Well, I'll tell you what. I will take the water tanker back round to the pond. And I will load it up with another load of water. And then I will bring it back and I will start unloading it and then I will tip it out at exactly the same time. I unhitch it as I'm unloading it. And that will finish unloading it and then we will grab that forage wagon. We will go up and we will see if we can pick up both hay and grass. We'll see if it, I, if it keeps it separately as hay or if it insists on turning the whole lot into the same uh, crop whilst it's inside the machine. I mean... It would be nice to have it as hay because that gives a higher percentage on the feed, which I'm hoping will improve the health of our cows who have suffered a little bit because we didn't give them any water. So I'm, I'm kind of hoping that that would be the case and then we'll, they'll be better off. They, they, well, I don't know if that's the case. 
but I'm hoping that that would improve the health of them. Uh, and if it doesn't, it doesn't. It just comes back as grass. That means that we'd have to go and bale it for hay. And I'm not sure how long you've got to leave it in order for it to turn into hay. There's, there is a set time. Whether you've got to leave it overnight for it to turn... No, I don't want to be doing that. It's the wrong place to do that. I need to swing you round like this and go up this side. On round the work spot right there. It's not far off of being done. Right, we're, we're nearly there, I think. We've got the water tanker in place. So start overloading right there, and I'll unhitch it at the same time. So that will keep doing the overloading bit. While it's doing that, we can go and grab our forage wagon. That is in this side. Come around here. And scream to a halt right there. I really like Sour Skittles here. He's quite a cool beastie. There is an updated version of it, although I've not actually installed the updated version. I will grab the updated version at some point and use that one instead of this one. It's been a few tweaks and also the artwork has been tweaked a little bit as well. So we're going to go racing out through here. And it's why I'm seriously considering getting rid of this horse pen and putting a different one in. Uh, like moving where it is just to make it a little bit easier for us. And probably it's, it's not going to do us any great benefit, but you never know, it might. Now, drive out on the grass over there. It's probably not the best thing to go and do. And we'll bring this one up to here. And I'm going to start right there. This, right, it's calling it hay at the moment. We have definitely got hay in here. It's definitely picking it up as hay fully identified it as hay on the field. So I will pick up all of this. Then I will go to the grass and I will see if it changes or if it will just not going to let us pick up. We've got quite a bit here that we can pick up. So it's, it's quite cool that we're able to do this. And I'm wondering if maybe I should get some more like this and, and have more of the stuff loose. Maybe this is the answer. But how long does it need to stay on the ground for? And it does seem like it's deteriorated a little bit in quality. So if I, turn, if I, like, leaving it on the ground, we'll do that. I'm not quite sure. I, I don't know what the terms and conditions are for hay. Like, how long have you got to leave it on the ground before it turns into hay? It seems like, looking at this, that there's less of it now on the ground than there was when we cut it. Like, the swath that I've left behind there with the mowers, it definitely seems like that's thicker on the ground. So whether the grass rotted at midnight and then what was left turned into hay maybe it did that now I'm just going to move this way and go into the grass bit oh it's doing that thing same as the balers whatever it is to start with that's what it stays as so now I'm going around the field and I'm picking it's decide the game's decided that this is hay now I don't actually like the fact that it does that at all I would rather it did what it used to do in FS17. And I don't understand the reason for the change. FS17, when you started whatever the last um, blade of stuff that went into the bale was, that's what it came out as. So if you baled an entire field, almost an entire bale with straw, and then you went over onto the grass, and you did the last 10 litres of grass, the bale would come out as grass. This version, they've done it completely the opposite. If the first 10 litres is grass, and then you go and finish the bale off with straw, the bale comes out as grass. I preferred the other way. I did, because... I, I mean, I, I don't know... It, it, not that it really makes a huge amount of difference, I suppose. The reason I preferred the other way is just because of how it affects the bales when they're coming out, um, when you're busy working them. Um, I could have gone through... I could have filled this one up completely with hay, but that does feel a little bit like cheating, so I'm not going to do that for that very particular reason. I don't want to feel like I'm cheating, so I will empty out the hay that we've got, like this. And we will have a look at that in here. So there, we've got a nice little bit of hay that has just gone into them. And then I'll now go back up and we'll get grass and we'll start filling that one up. So what it'll do is it will use up the hay first... And then when it's used up that one, then it moves down to this one. And if you've got TMR in there, it ignores both of those until it's used up the TMR. I mean, it, it's good that it does have, like, the, the reserve in there. 
But it also means that if you load that one up with grass and hay and silage and then you start putting a TMR in, it's never going to use the grass and hay and silage ever. It's only going to focus on just using the TMR. And I don't really understand why it does that. I would have thought that it would sort of lower all of them. Uh, or it would find a way to sort of balance all three of them or something. I, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure, but it, it doesn't seem quite right that it, it completely ignore you. You fill these up and it can stay there for absolutely ages with no difference in it at all. Um, but if you keep putting the TMR in it, you could have grass that will stay there for years in theory. So I'm not really sure if I like that bit. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. We need to, we'll go around until we've got one full trailer load on here. We'll run that back down to the cows and we'll dump that in. So that is all of the grass that we want for them as well. We'll leave this up in the field. I'm not going to bother with doing any turning at the moment. I'd like the grass to grow another growth stage. Then we will worry about making some bales of hay and stuff like that. So if I mow it and then I apply, I put the tedder on it. Does that increase the speed that it turns into hay? Or can I just leave it in the windrows? Is there any difference in that at all? That's, that's another little aspect of this that I, I don't know about. I, there's so many questions that I've got about seasons that I don't really understand. Oh, actually, maybe that is one question that is answered in here. We do have the help. We have got the, the help bit in here. It doesn't say. Swaths and piles of grass will begin to reduce in size and will eventually disappear after several days. Grass swaths and piles are reduced at midnight every day. Hay and straw swaths and piles are reduced after being exposed to rain. Straw and hay must be baled before it can be sold. Do stray, uh, straw and stray and haw. Straw and hay cannot be sold, only given away for free. Grass baled or loose cannot be sold either. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So, um. It doesn't say how quickly we can turn it into hay, but I do know from the amount that we got from that last windrow that it was grass when it changed at midnight. And then when we moved to, by the time we got to it in the morning, actually it's, it's been two days, hasn't it? It's, that's, I'm wondering, but it hasn't rained. It's been two days, but it hasn't rained. So it went through, it went over midnight one night and the grass reduced in size it reduced in volume and then it got turned into hay so what is the temperature requirement and what 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 what's all of the requirements for turning into hay this is a bit that i'm a little bit confused about is what have i got to do in order to actually have hay coming out of my fields and what what's what's the best way to do it like do i need to change it like, if, if I put the tether over it, because somebody said that you put the tether over it immediately, it doesn't s straight away turn into hay. But then, you don't, so, do you need to put the, does the tether increase the speed that it converts? Or do, if they basically just eliminated the need for a tether altogether? Why do I need to, do I need to turn the hay? Is that going to make any difference? Or do I just completely ignore that? I put it on the ground and i got to wait for like 24 hours before it actually converts into hay. If that is the case and I'm then always going to lose some quantity overnight. I'm a bit disappointed with that to be honest. I'm not sure I like that particular item. Well, but I, I don't know. I, I don't actually know if that is the case. If it is, I'll be disappointed. But it might not be. It might be that if we use the tether, it changes it to um, hay just a little bit faster than it would otherwise. So I'm going to... I'm going to have to do a little bit of experimentation with this. Once we're able to do a bit more work like that, then yes, definitely experimentation is going to be done. Experiments are going to be had. I'll bring you down and we'll dump, we'll put in all of the grass that we can. We've got 24,000, uh, 24,500 litres of grass in here. We'll dump all of this into the cow. Well, that's about all we've got time for in today's episode. So we're going to go and take a little bit of a break. We need to chill out on the beach, relax, and build up some strength. So while we're doing that, if you've enjoyed the episode, then could you please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.